a very clever holder for your nano VNA, and fed Halfwave versus DX Commander, and hunting Poda from inside a park, this time on Mailbag Monday. What's happening, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to K8MRD Radio Stuff. My name is Mike. If you have a question for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com, and you may have your question answered on an episode of Mailbag Monday. We've got three great things to talk about today, the first of which is uh, a really cool and interesting uh, thing that was sent to me. I'll show you in a second. This this viewer is writing, your videos are the bomb. Thank you. I enjoy how you combine really good information with humor. Well, that's ar that's arguable, but thank you. <laughs> I've uh, designed and started to make these holders for the Nano VNA H4, and everyone in my club loves them, and I have been sending them to some of the people that I admire on YouTube. Anyway, the other day I saw that you got a Nano VNA H4, and so I thought I would send you one as well. I hope it works for you and you enjoy it. Anyway, thank you for turning me on to 10 tennas. You're welcome. I have two of them and love them, as do I. Thanks again for your videos. I've learned so much from you and blah, 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 all that kind of nice stuff. So check this out. This is what he sent here. It's just a mishmash of 3D printed parts right now. Uh, and I, I don't know if this is on like Thingiverse or anything. I couldn't find it on Thingiverse, but hopefully uh, he'll let us know in the comments uh, if, if we can download this STL file for everyone else to make them. Or uh, uh, we can just uh, go look at K3, uh, KC3 UDZ and email him and bug him. Be like, hey, I saw your Nano VNA thing on Kate MRD Radio stuff. So basically the way this works, you got your Nano VNA H4. And it's it's a little wonky to put together, but you have these these clips here that, that go into it. And then you've got this box that's kind of like the back support. See, it's... And it's got like this doingy thing on here. So it, it, it all comes together pretty cool. Of course, it's, it's hard to do when you're filming. But here is the finished product. So look at that. You get this cool little, like easel thing for your nano vna and then back here you've got this little compartment so here's like your your open short and load you've got some room to put uh some some wires and things some doodads and whatnot so that's pretty cool the other cool thing about this he's got these little like wrench type things because we just straight up covered these ports and these are slotted so like your wire for example would go in here and then um, it's not a perfect fit. It's a little small, but the idea here is that we can now use this as like a wrench to screw in your your cables and things like that. So you can do like that because it's you're not you're not getting your fingers in there. So and then if we need to take them out, I just thought this was a really slick idea. So the Nano VNA is great. It comes with all kinds of little doodads. If you're gonna take this out into the park. Um, this is cool because you have this little compartment, so everything's kind of all there together. And then you want to take it apart, it just all kind of collapses down into this tiny little package. So very, very cool. So a big shout out to John Muggs, KC3 UDZ, for uh, sending this over here. And hopefully we can uh, get the STL or you can you can email me or something and I can put in the description where to get this so very cool so thanks for sending that in man that's that's very very cool next we have a question talking about antennas boy do I love my antennas this viewer is writing howdy Mike howdy to you partner I'm just getting back into the hobby after many years welcome back I'm looking for a primary station antenna and I've narrowed it down to two I'm thinking one of the following either the par n fed zen fed half wave 80 through 10 or the dx commander classic uh, 80 meter uh, of which I own both of these. Uh, tight budget here, so even though I want both, I have to purchase just one of the two for the time being. What are your thoughts? Thanks for taking the time to consider. By the way, new supporter, love the videos. Thank you for your support. So, I can talk uh, very well on this subject. <laughs> Better than I just said that. So I can speak very, very highly of the DX Commander antenna. It is a resonant antenna. There are no transformers, no nothing. It's just coax into the feed point and then the wigglies up the wires and that's it. So your losses are pretty much whatever coax you have 
uh, and whatever losses per the frequencies you're going to have with that. It's a quarter wave vertical antenna that's resonant. They're fantastic. They're multi-band. I literally have nothing bad to say about DX Commander. I've been using them for years, and I will continue to use them for years. And Callum is a great person. I know him personally. Uh, he is always continually improving on the antennas. He's not just like, well, here's the antenna, and that's what you get. No, he's always improving on it. So there's always R&D going into it. Now... You asked specifically about PAR NFED's 80 meter antenna. And I just so happen to have that right here. This was given to me by PAR NFED's at uh, Hamcation. And up until a few days ago, this is the antenna that was above my house. I've had it up for about a month. Uh, I, I did a review video of it, and you will never see it because I'm not going to publish it. I believe very firmly this unit is defective. Um, as far as the build quality and the feel and, and everything about it, it feels 100% top notch. But I own a stupid amount of NFED half wave antennas, and I've put up many above my house. I put this one up in the exact same configuration that every other antenna in my house has been set up. And it's not resonant anywhere. It's not resonant on 80 meters. It's not resonant on 40 meters. Oddly enough, it is actually resonant on 20 meters, but it's not resonant on 17, 15, 12, or 10. There's just something wrong with this antenna. So I actually took it down. I'm going to send it back to Scott, the owner of Par and Feds, and uh, see what's going on. But um, So I, I just don't have a good experience. I'm not saying they're bad antennas. I'm saying that the one I have doesn't work. Now, if you want an NFED antenna, there are two companies specifically that I use. And while I don't get any kickbacks or anything, I will give them the K8 MRD uh, endorsement. One of which is 10 Tennas, which is this guy right here. You go to eBay and type in 10 Tennas, T E N N T E N N A S, Walt, Ohio. This one for 40 bucks right here is this antenna right here. This is the old version. Now you're buying the transformer. You still need to get wire and tune it and all that stuff. One of these is above my house right now and I use it all the time. It's been up there uh, since, it's been up there for about two years and I love it. I've never had a problem with it. I own several 10 antennas. Uh, I own, he makes a QRP version. He makes a slightly smaller, like higher version. And this is the, the Mama Chapina, 40 bucks. It's a 3D printed case. There's a 240-43 toroid in here, and uh, it just it just works, okay? The other I would recommend, uh, I searched on eBay and I couldn't see them, but you find them on eBay, is Nelson Antennas. This is my Nelson Antennas NFED half wave. Now, I would strongly suggest to get the high power version. This is the like 100 watt version, and he rates these for like 70 watts digital, he really needs to derate that. I can put about 40 watts through this before the toroid starts getting saturated and uh, the SWR goes up. Once it cools down, it's fine, but um, if you're going to do digital you know, a lot, get the high power version. This, this, You'll be disappointed in this. Other than that, fantastic antenna, fantastic transformer, fantastic build quality, fantastic wire. Um, I'm seriously considering buying another one of these, the high power version to put back up. I'm just a huge fan. So either if you want an NFED half wave, either 10 antennas or Nelson antennas, both can be found on eBay when they're available. So that would be what I would tell you. But um, <sighs> the DX commander is just... Uh. So do you have 130 some odd feet for an NFED half wave or would the vertical be better for you? That's kind of where you need to start thinking now. So uh, that's my two cents. Uh, guys, if you have a par NFEDs antenna, specifically this one, uh, this is the all band kilowatt NFEDs. Uh, let me know what your, what your uh, thoughts are on it. Does it work for you? Does it not work for you? Uh, I would imagine it's hard for a manufacturer to get every antenna perfect, just given all the different uh, situations that we can put antennas up in. But let me know what you think of the PAR NFEDs, and uh, thanks for writing in.
Lastly, we have a question about parks on the air, but specifically being a hunter from within a park. This viewer is writing, Hi, Mike. Love the channel uh, and your wittiness. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question related to POTA. If I go to a park as a hunter and make six park-to-park -park contacts, should I upload those into my log uploads so the activator gets credit for park-to-park -park contacts? Would the hunter get credit as well, or do you have to make at least 10 contacts? If the hunter gets 10 contacts, does that qualify for a park activation? Just asking because a lot of times I stop at a park on my way home and work uh, from work, but only get a few contacts hunting. My brain doesn't have enough memory to be an activator, <laughs> and it takes me an hour and a half to watch 60 minutes, if you know what I mean. So first off, there's an app for that. It's called Hammers. H-A-M-R-S. I'll leave a link in the description. Freaking download hammers for God's sakes. Uh, but to answer your question, so if you are in a state or national park that is part of the Parks on the Air program, you are an activator, whether you like it or not, or whether that's your intention. And I have gone into parks solely as a hunter. I've done... I've activated a park just by hunting 10 park-to-park -park, uh, stations or, or guys that were in other other park-to-parks. The answer to all of your questions is yes. Always upload your log. Whether you made one contact or a thousand contacts, always upload your log. Because you are hunting uh, other POTA activators, but you are also giving them a park-to-park. If you don't upload their law, your log, they won't get that park to park. You'll still be in there. You'll get credit for it as a hunter, but they won't get credit as a park to park. Also, if you happen to work somebody uh, who's not in a park, say they just come back to you because they know you're in a park, well, they came back to you because they wanted to make contact with you in that park. If you don't upload your log, they're not going to get that credit. Even if you upload it to like Logbook of the World and stuff, that's a completely separate. So who cares about Logbook of the World and QRZ? This is POTA. I want to see that. Like I've worked Alaska a million times. Don't have it as a park to park in POTA. I need it. So and I have worked Alaska POTA and it's not uploaded in the log. So, yeah, like we as hunters want that stuff uh, logged. So whether you make one contact, I just said one contact, a thousand contacts, upload your log because you are an activator, even though your main purpose is just hunting. So hopefully that clarifies it. I, I, I know I've touched this subject before, but I know that if one person has this question, probably a hundred people have this question and it's worth repeating. So yeah, guys, if you're in a park, no matter what you do, unless it's on a repeater, if you make a contact, Please upload that log. So that'll take care of this episode of Mailbag Monday. If you have an amateur radio related question for me, shoot me an email, k at mrd at icloud.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again on another episode of k at mrd radio stuff. 73, guys.